Hi, and welcome to day 19 of Quiltmas. I'm so glad you're here. Today I get to share with you my best resource for scrappy crafty goodness, Austin Creative Reuse. I also have the breakdown of the quilt along schedule, so stay tuned and don't miss that. As always, my countdown box opening and honest reaction is at the end. You gotta stick around to find out. Now, let's get on with the show. I've mentioned how I shop a little bit differently than a lot of people. Link that video in the cards. And the amazing local resource we have here in Austin called Austin Creative Reuse. Last week, I had the privilege to sit down with Jen Evans, the creative director of ACR, who tells us about the mission, the process, and the impact on the community here in Austin. After the interview, there is some footage as Casey and I walked around the store it is merely a brief overview of the possibility that is Austin Creative Reuse. I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Jen, for sitting down with me today and allowing us to film here at Austin Creative Reuse. It's, an rem it's truly a remarkable place. We love it here so much. So oh. if you can tell me a little bit about what exactly is Austin Creative Reuse? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're really happy to have you today. It's also one of my favorite places, which makes it a fun place to come to work. Um, so we are a nonprofit. We were founded in 2009, and our mission is really to keep all of these amazing creative materials that you see around me um, in the world and in craft rooms and art studios and classrooms um, instead of in the landfill, which is where most of them would have ended up. So um, since we're opening our first center in 2015, we've now kept about 2 million pounds of creative materials out of the landfill. So oh, wow. it's, uh, it's a pretty big undertaking, That's but we know we're having an impact. That's amazing. What brought you specifically to Austin Creative Reuse? Well, like a lot of people here, I actually came in as a shopper my first time. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a link on, you know, something on social media, and I was like, well, that sounds like my kind of place. And I came by um, with some donations, did some shopping, did a little volunteering, and I think like most of us just felt like, this is my place, these are my people. Um, I had very small children at the time, and I was looking to get out of the house a bit more, use my brain again. Um, so I joined the board in 2017. I did that for sustainability on our board for a couple of years, and then joined our staff in 2020. Um, right kind of around the time the pandemic was getting going so it was a pretty interesting time. That is an interesting time. And what is your role here? I'm our executive director. So um, sometimes I'll be out, you know, talking to people about what we do. Sometimes I'm in the back processing donations or working at the register, sort of whatever we need to do to kind of get things going around here. And how many other people work here or volunteer? Yeah. So we currently have a staff of about 35. Um, so it's quite a big undertaking, actually. And that's for the entire organization. So that's the folks you'll see here in our Creative Reuse Center, uh, folks for us in donations, and then also um, our volunteer team and our programming team, folks who are out in the community um, doing outreach. And then we have hundreds of volunteers. So over the last 12 months, we've had volunteers have given us almost 20,000 hours of volunteer time. So um, that's that includes folks who come into the center and help process donations, to folks around in the community talking to folks about what we do, um, people who actually process donations at home. That's a program we started during the pandemic, so folks could do it on their own schedule um, and, you know, socially distance. But now it turns out it's actually just really convenient. So. <laughs> I would imagine it is. Where does all the amazing crafty goodness where does it come from? Yeah. So it's all donations. Mm -hmm. um, so it comes from donations both from individuals. So folks who are cleaning out their craft closet or said, oh, I you know, was really into needlework, but it turns out I don't really want to do that or I don't want to do it anymore. Um, they might have some things at home they don't need anymore. And then we also get quite a lot of donations from businesses. So um, either folks who are kind of clearing out things they no longer need um, or some really interesting donations uh, that come from like different processes that folks may do. So, um, you know, the end cuts of fabric that upholstery houses can't use and those types of things and get them back into the economy that way. What, besides all the artsy craftsy goodness that you can buy, what else do you guys offer? Oh, well, we try. Once we get you guys in the door um, with you know, our <laughs> low-cost arts and craft supplies, um, we also like to share and make sure folks are also really kind of celebrating and understanding the environmental impact they're making. So every time someone donates here or purchases something secondhand that they could have bought, you know, in a big box store, making an environmental choice to keep those items out of the landfill, to cut the greenhouse gases, protect the water, protect the natural resources. And so we really like to celebrate that when folks are here with us. 
and then we also um, want folks to practice their creativity. So we offer about 10 to 12 workshops a month. You can come in with one of our guest instructors and learn something new. Um, we try to keep most of those classes um, for beginner levels. We want it to be all as accessible as possible so you can come in and you know try something you might not have been able to explore with before. Um, we also are, offer private events in our space if you want to come into your birthday party or another event with folks. Um, and then of course those volunteer opportunities. We love for folks to come in and volunteer with us and keep all of these materials flowing. Excellent. Thank you. And so I was that was the next that leads to the next question about how can local or even non-local people mm -hmm contribute and get involved. Yeah, um, so one of the best ways to, to get involved is just to come in and, and visit with us. So um, we're here in the center about six, well, six days a week typically. We are going to be closed um, between Christmas and New Year's, which is fantastic. fantastic. That. Um, that's a chance for us to reset the center, but also for our staff to take a break, go home to their families oh, yes. and take a little bit of a rest. But otherwise, we're here um, Tuesday through Sunday. Um, so you can come in, see what we have to offer, take a class, volunteer, um, or come connect with us outside the center. Uh, we're always happy to take those donations to help you clean out the things you no longer need. Um, and then, of course, we always appreciate monetary contributions as well. Um, every bit of money that comes through the center goes right back into the center or into our outreach programs to get these great supplies into schools um, or other community spaces as well. Great. And you have an online presence. Yes. And yeah. people can find out more information about donating or even I know you have a an online commerce site yep, is that correct? We do yeah so. so you can find more information about the organization generally at austincreativereuse.org and then through there you can also find our online store which is also shopacr.org uh, we started the online store during the pandemic as well to kind of keep materials out there folks were telling us you know I've got all this time or I've got all this stress and I really yeah. need to create something so we knew it was really important to keep those materials going out into the community um, and since then since we reopened the center after the pandemic or in the kind of post-pandemic world. Um, it's now for unique items, things that might get broken if they're on the floor or kind of extra things. I'm constantly on the website being like, what's in there now? What can I get? Um, what can I gift, right, around right. the holiday season as well? So, um, and for folks who aren't here in Austin or aren't passing through Austin, I'd encourage them to check out what kind of creative review centers they have in their own communities. Um, over the last kind of five, ten years, we have seen creative review centers popping up all over the country. Um, they're all different so you know for us we really focus on the environmental aspect and getting these materials um, in from the community and you know back out to the community um, some creative area centers really focus on education so they work directly, almost exclusively with schools or um, they're in after-school programs working with the kids on our education which you know is pretty expensive and a little yes, easier to do when you're using reuse materials so it's often encourage folks just google creative area center and see what they have available to them as well all right well, I think that's what I have today. I right. really, I really appreciate your yeah, time. Yeah, of course. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Of course. And we're gonna walk around the store yeah. and share this amazing place with everybody on Mars. Yeah, have a good time. It's a fun <laughs> place to be. It's easy to spend hours and hours and hours. It here. is. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed. Okay, welcome to Austin Creative Reuse. This is the parking lot. It's a beautiful day here in Austin this day. And you walk in, you know, I'm not sure what this building was beforehand. I should have asked, but I didn't. And you walk in and, you know, it's kind of a, kind of a crazy place and we just love it. Casey's my cameraman today and he's going to show <laughs> this bead covered unicorn horse. And we're just walking through and you can see it's a big place and it is filled with all kinds of fun things to rummage through. That board there that was on the right has their volunteer schedule and their classes. I think all of this to the left is beads, artwork everywhere. That's all made with plastic bottle caps, recycled plastic bottle caps. This section here, you can fill a bucket for $5 and it's just, it guys, it's just junk in this section. That five gallon bucket, you can fill for $5. And it's just junk. It's so much fun because you can go through and you can just pick out what you want. It's great for collage. It's fantastic for kids and schools. Everything's sorted by category 
and you just dig. You find everything that you want. It's a great place to find project materials. It's a great place to find things for kids camps and for, I mean, they have everything from fine art supplies. You see some fiber arts there. There are some beautiful art frames coming up for just for just a few dollars. Things that would be in the landfill that now you get to take home and make into your creative treasures. Coming up, we'll see the fabric department, which is, of course, my favorite. And it has everything from quilting cotton to scraps to half-finished projects. Notions of all kinds, zippers, and all kinds of all kinds of fabrics, not just quilting cotton, but dressmaker fabric and fancy fabric. That there is a bag of scraps for a dollar. It didn't come home with me. I was very good. I only brought home one layer cake. But it, guys, it was eight dollars. More fabric, and it's all sorted by category it's a fantastic place to find fabrics and um, materials for donation items if you like to make pillowcases it's sorted by size of cut there's the fiber arts department and then we're coming up on the front desk that's the front desk all made with bottle caps and then the front with florals and ACR there Austin Creative Reuse is really a special place. Besides being a fun place to adventure and explore, the work they are doing is really amazing. I hope that you will seek out a creative reuse in your area or as you travel. Okay, next on the agenda is the January Process Quilt Along. I still need a better name for that because How Amy's Brain Works doesn't seem like a good name. Again, the pattern that I am using is Remixed Geese by Erica Jackman, and it's free on the Robert Kaufman site, linked below. But as this is an explanation of systems and my process, and absolutely not a tutorial of how to make the blocks or the quilt, feel free to choose any pattern that you want to make. This is all about sharing how I break down my quilt making for time and efficiency. And that completely translates to any pattern. It's just to show how I make decisions quickly and why this works for me. All you need to do for now is choose your pattern. That's it. Simple, no pressure. Everything else will come step by step, week by week in January. The plan is this. Videos will go up on Wednesdays, so January 3rd. Color choices, design decisions, and preparation. January 10th. Cutting and Kitting, January 17th, Piecing and Pressing, January 24th, Layout and Assembly, and January 31st, Quilting and Finishing. I'll put that schedule below for reference. It's simple and easy and totally at your own pace. If you want to sew along and see how it works, all you need to do now is choose your pattern. If you don't have time, energy, or inclination to sew along, that is just fine. I hope you'll watch along and see how it goes. And of course, the quilt along won't be the only January content, so I think we'll all have fun along the way. Up next is the countdown box opening, and I'll be right back to see us out. Let me just do that over. <laughs> Quilty Advent Calendar Day 19. Okay, I'm happy. It's silly and it's not really anything quilting. <laughs> but it's Happy Quilter Variety Word Puzzles. I, I like word puzzles. I like these. The word searches. And this one's large print for, you know, people who might be over 40 and need the bifocals to see things. And cute pencils. Cute pencils. And a puzzle book. That could be fun. Day 19. I remembered. 
Thanks so much for hanging out with me on day 19 of Quiltmas. We're over halfway through. I hope you're still having fun. In the comments, I'd love to know if you have a reuse center in your area or if there are other unconventional places you shop for quilting supplies or anything else. Let us know and click those buttons, like, subscribe, share. Remember, you'll need to be a subscriber to win the upcoming giveaway, so get a head start on that today. I hope that you are ready for and calmly entering these last few days before Christmas and the new year. Whether you're cruising through or, like me, screeching in like your hair's on fire, I hope you never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.